Park Run 5K app is today's podcast. My name is Jodie Bunting, and today my special guest is my lovely friend, Claire. Now, Claire, I've known her since 2006 when we met when we were working abroad in Egypt. And over the last couple of years, she has become a super fan of the free 5K events in the UK and are across the world called Park Run, ladies and gentlemen. Now, today I want you to talk, I want to talk about a app called 5K. So it's is it an official app or is it? Um, I think it's an app, you know, made by some creators of also fanatics like myself. So it's because it's not actually called the Park Run app, is no, it? No. It's actually just called 5k so what we're going to be doing you today can support it, give money yeah there's lots of ways that you can support this app what we're going to do today is go exactly what is the 5k app because to be honest there's loads of options i get confused so claire's going to give you a rundown step by step on every single thing the first thing to do just go into your phone um if you haven't got the app go into your phone store so the apple store or the android store and just search 5k the number five and the letter k and download that free app. look for the purple color now what we're going to do is magically pop it on the screen. Ooh. This is the 5K app. You can see it here on the screen. Now as soon as you open it up, it will ask you for your park run number. So underneath Claire's name, you can see that's her park run number. She just puts that in and it automatically takes this data from the park run website. Now Claire, so we're going to go through this screen first of all, and then we'll go through all the other good features. So at the top there is your name and your part run number, which for anybody who doesn't know, you need this number to uh, go to an event, actually get your results sync. So that's why it is so important. It's also good for your ice. So if you do have that part run number, they can contact your um, um, emergency contacts. Yeah, so ice means a co emergency contact also known as next of kin. Um, then it has on here 60 park runs. That's how many Claire's done at 40 locations. Her personal best is 13 minutes, 55 seconds. Uh, where's that? Nutella fields. Where Nutella? Nutella. Oh, whereabouts Nutella. is it? It's like Ealing Way. Okay. I, got, I did that one because I wanted to get the N. And how did you get the um, PB? I'm not too sure to myself. I think I just ran as fast as I could and hope for the best, like I do most weeks. Was it a particular hot day or what do you think? It was affects? actually a really quite flat course, to be honest. It was a little bit hilly, but I think um, I think not really knowing where the finish is sometimes helps you. Just to keep on going. Yeah, that's it. it was a lovely course, though. I liked it. I would I would go back there at some point, maybe in the next few years. So also on the top there, it says you volunteered volunteered 37 times at 27 events and then it's kind of just got a um your your latest activity would you say yeah but i think volunteering is important today as well because you can volunteer and run at the same time so any of you want to do both but still run you can you could um just uh literally put your name down for if you're a fast runner a bit faster than me you could put your name down for barcode scanning at the end or you could do set up or something if you're a bit slow like me Okay, so at the bottom it says view full profile. So yeah. we're going to click on that. And then into some of these amazing logos. First of all, there's a number underneath your barcode. What does that mean? That's your age band. So VW 35 to 39. I know both people thought I was 25, but you know, we, we can allow. And does that automatically update? Yes, that will update. So basically, I've just got the uh, 25 volunteers last Sunday and, and that given me that badge. So a new member won't have any of those nice colourful badges. You've got the, no. the, the pink 5 -0, the red. Yeah. Um, like and I'm you're wearing... actually wearing the T-shirt, yeah. aren't you? you so on the back up, here, though. you will see she's wearing a red T-shirt with 50 on the back. And then there's also a volunteer one for 25. Yeah, so that works post. exactly the same. You can also get the T-shirts, can't yeah. you? So again, um, or no, for the first time, we're seeing this barcode button. So if I click that, it will actually show your barcode. So you used to have to print that for the uh, events, but now you can just show it on your phone, can't you? Yeah, I, I do that when I feel to, but I've also got my special band. Um, I'll just take that off and bring it closer to the screen. 
So you can just see it's got your also your ID and your name and your parkrun thing. Because again, some people do get flustered, don't they? You know, you've just ran, you've just physically exhausted yourself. Actually, getting your phone out and finding your barcode can be quite tricky. So, yeah. I would recommend these bands for people. And good that... for I send emergency contacts also. Yes. Another thing to mention is you don't have to scan straight away. If you're, you know, you can give yourself five minutes to recover before you get your barcode scan. It's not going to affect your time because some people actually think that. Yeah. So just so you know. Right. Next. So you, we've said that you've got your 60 uh, part runs at 40 locations. Um, and then you can see here, tap to see the map. So if we click on there, we can actually see. Oh, do we have to squeeze yeah. out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we can see on here. This is quite exciting, isn't it? So the green ones are the ones that you've done. Yeah. And the orange ones and the red ones are... So the orange ones are with cancellations in the next coming weeks. Yeah. And the red one is cancellations at the moment. Okay. So if we zoom into London, you can see, how do you feel when you see all those ticks? I feel that there's not enough. Okay. <laughs> and the good news is when we really zoom out, we should see that the Netherlands, which we were in this morning, uh, there we go, we've got a tick there. So we're going to be talking about why Claire did a part run in the Netherlands in a moment. Um, I'll go back to that page, because there's something you should show the people. OK, page. and what do we want to see? If you go down to that box at the bottom, that square here, here. This one, click on that. OK. That shows you your nearest 10 park runs to where you are at any moment. So we are now closest to that top one, number one. Castle Park. That is our closest park run. Because we're currently currently in Stansted Airport. Right, next up, it says about your PB. Yeah. And then it says tap to see progression. So we're clicking on there. Yeah. And this tells us what? This tells us my per so on the 10th of September, I was had my personal best in Long Eaton when I went down to visit the Derby sides and that was 3327 and then if you go back up look, you can see that in um december i broke that pb to 3156 and recently broke it again in 28th of um january so those are basically your pbs in best order are they yeah so if you go right down to the bottom we'll see your worst one was at mark eaton 41 yeah I know it's great to see where you come from and everything. I know. I, you know, the running club is helping me. Right. Is that junior tab on all of them? Yeah. That's if you like running the junior ones. Because some people, you know, your kids can run park run. I did fact I didn't know before. Um, If you run a certain number of park runs up to half marathon, you do get a special reward from the park run people as well. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know. Right, so that's PB done. The next one is the best age range. So explain what does this mean? 48.95%. I don't understand this. So this is basically the the whole amount of athletes overall in your age band and how you come each week percentage-wise. So they gather all the data. And at the moment, I'm about mediocre for my age. So um, you're in the middle of them all. Well, yeah, because one is the highest. So I'm about middle range. So if all the people at your range were lined up, yeah, it goes on the fastest one. Yeah. So you'd be in the middle, basically. Yeah, if my age was, it might, if I was the middle range runner. So what you want to be then is your percentage is the lowest is the best. Yeah. Because this is what confuses me. Because for me, being 100% is like no. the best. But this way, it's reverse 100%, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but like people who are like 1 to 30 or so, I would say, are more elite athletes. Like, so it's like saying you want to be the top 1% in the country. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Okay. Right, so if we click on that, it says see your progression. Yeah. And this works exactly the same as the PB, does it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, age grade age grade pb so again the best and the worst that mark eaton one really was the worst wasn't it yeah it, it does depend as well though on the, the people who run that week 
Okay, so that can be changed. Then. Yeah. Right, the next one, it says uh, best finished position is number 47. Yeah. Now, obviously, this is all to do with how many people are running that park run, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I, I literally only have that because I ran a very small park run. Right. So I've been lucky. I think I was the third from the finish. <laughs> that park run. So that's why I've got that. And I'm quite proud, to be honest, of that. Right. Most park runs in a year. Uh, you did 44, which was last year. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed about that. Why? Because there's also awards for that, look, bronze, silver and gold. And okay. I didn't get to gold because I didn't have enough. Right. We're going to talk about these special awards and things in a minute. Uh, park runs this year, 10. And then you can click on there and then we can see a breakdown of the years. What are you going for this year? How many do you think you're um, going to do? 55. You're going to try and do 55? I think that's all the ones for the whole year, yeah. And what about your volunteers? Um, I would like to get to 50 by the end of the year at least, obviously. But, you know, I have to do that on a Sunday because I can't do many roles on a Saturday. I'm wrong. Right, next, um, it says... Oh, yeah, volunteer... Volunteer credits, 20 in 2022. Uh, we've done that one. Right. Times of volunteered. What's that one? But So basically, you can do two jobs, look, uh, uh, um, apart from. Oh, so you can get two credits then? No, no, you'd only get one credit. But you would get, um, you could be, it would give you an extra number. And what are distinct volunteer roles? That's something like um, first time briefing, VI guide, that's... um visual impaired guide for someone who's visually impaired, um, uh, marshalling, a towel walker, which I've done before for the junior park run, a um, warm-up leader for the junior park run. Well, that's a distinctive role. Yeah, wow. I'm a junior park run lead. Wow. <laughs> they literally putting me down every week for that in my park run, <laughs> juniors. They love me. Right, the next one, which I think is important, it's the volunteer ratio. So how many park runs you've done versus how many... That's times really you volunteer high, you're 41 percent. what do you think everyone should be it should be at least 25 percent. okay i think that means you do two per month or something like that okay um total distance 30 km so that's just worked on how many part runs you've done 300 that is Doug, not 30 sorry 300 just next one average time is 36 minutes yeah. Park run birthday, 7th of August 2021. Mm. Years park running one. Yeah, one no well, two this year will be. I know it's quite a big achievement, 60 in one year, really. Next is total days attendance, 75. Current tourist streak 15. What does that mean? That means how many times I've not been to the same park run. So I'm on 15 at the moment. So if I go to back to one I've been before, then it'll go back to zero. Oh, so this is actually promoting people then to keep on touring, visiting. Yeah. Right, longest touring streak is what you're on now, yeah. 15. Right, P index two, what's that? This is something to do with... Um, if you run the same part one, different part ones more than a certain number of time, as far as I can understand. Okay. Right, the index four. That's a volunteering thing to do with how many times you've volunteered in okay. the same place. What's the Wilson index Right, now one? this is very complicated and I'm still trying to figure it out fully. But it's to do with the number, the event number that you've attended. So your, your Wilson index will be lower compared to the difference in numbers. So, because I've got one... That means my index is lower because the next one is five. So I'm floating index four. Because all part runs have a number, don't they? Yeah. It per, well, no, no, not they don't have a specific number. They go up in a number. So each event has a number. Yeah. I think that's important to say. So because I've got an event one, because I did a a, 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 a nickel. Is that say a nickel? I'd say it first event is nickel. I think I'm saying that wrong, but a first event. First event. Um, that's how I've managed it. They are top secret. Shh. People yeah, like so for those. people who don't know what happens is, because of this app and people all want to try and get number one, 
when new events are on Facebook or social media, it goes crazy. Loads of people attend and they haven't got enough bar tags. They haven't got enough volunteers. So this is why they try and keep it quiet. And at one they? point, one, one park run decided to cease operation because people have complained. So that is why they try and keep it as quiet as possible. Um, and it doesn't always stay quiet because the apps are quite good at kind of giving hints. And I found that one, and then it was on the Facebook of on the on the actual park run page, and I went. <laughs> Did take me an hour and a half to get there, but well worth it. Right, milestone. So twenty five club. Yeah. You got basically that means you ran twenty five park runs. Yeah. That was second of July last summer. Yeah. Right, 50, this is your new red T-shirt, and you did that on the 31st of December. <laughs> yeah. That was exciting, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was so exciting. And that was a new one for me as well. Now, it says you've got 100, uh, you've got 60 more, oh, no, you've got 60 of 100. So 40 to go till you get your Yeah, and we're on 100. the 10th week of the year, so it is possible. Okay, great. And I could always do it on Christmas Day again. Right, V25 is volunteer. Yeah. So you're on your way to getting your 50, yeah. halfway there. Yeah. Uh, recent analy anal analysis. What does this mean? <laughs> Sorry, this is showing how it's going down. My time is getting decreased. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And what does that 98th percentile? I, I actually think that's something to do with your... Um weight and stuff you know like you know like when you get when you're born and you've got that thing i think it's the same thing for running but i don't know how exactly works. because it's that. called mid yeah i think i'm doing well right time analysis again that's just a graph of your as your time going down i'm guessing yeah age grade analysis right so it, as you can see here there's a very big dip now this is about the people who run at that park run on that pacific day so when i went to jersey farm there was a lot, a lot of old people or very, very young people. There wasn't many people in my category. Therefore, my age went, went down. Okay. Pace and analysis. <laughs> Pace is about your speed. So obviously I went to a few park runs where my, where my time went a bit up. Now, those of you who do park run regularly, different events, you know, some are hilly and some are flat. The flatter events, normally you can get a faster race. So that's obviously why there's a bit of anomaly there. And then fastest event analysis. It shows you the fastest events to the slowest. Great. Right, so that was your full, full profile. Yeah. And going back, we go on to the, the front page again. Right. Then, I'm going to show something here as well. Yes. It will, it will, so you've got here where this little, um, looks like a little cup. That's how many challenges you've reached in that one park run. So I've got seven achievements today. So if you look at the top here, uh, you can see that this is the part that we've done today. And there's that number seven there. So that's what, can, does it do anything if you click on it? Um, result analysis, maybe? No, the next one. Yes, it tells you. So it says, if you go up a bit, look. It says, I've got alphabeteer challenge, Z, the cow's challenge. Now that's why I'm wearing this cow scarf. Because the first person to ever complete 100 different park runs was called cows, therefore you wear the cow scarf. And then there's a Frida one where it's 250 duck. And then jet setters, that's because we went to a different country, the same as world tourism. And position bingo is there's different positions. So I think it's one to 100. Um, it doesn't matter, it's the last two digits. And then there's date bingo as well. These are all to do with the challenges duck. So this is why, so this is probably why we're gonna say now, uh, the A to Z, basically, you have to run every park run from A to Z. And this is why we went to Amsterdam this weekend, because you wanted to run the Z. Yes. Is it only in Amsterdam? Where else can you run a Z? Not Poland. in England. Poland. So you can't do it in England? No. Is that the only one, then, you have to leave the UK for? Yeah, technically, because there's no X. Now, how many more letters have you got to go in? <laughs> what are they? Where um, are you going to go? I'm going to go to Isabella Trow. So if anyone does live near Joe's area and wants to put me up, feel free to let me know. Um, I'm looking for that. Um, also, I'm thinking to visit Queen's um, one. It's a little bit in Petersfield. I've never been there before. Also, if anyone's offered some accommodation there, I'm also available. And I think one more letter. Uh, Q. Why? I need to go to York. 
Now you have told me about, you know, I, I think you're a bit of a loser for doing this A to Z. The more I see it, the more, you know, I understand why people do it because it is a little bit of a nice challenge. But he told me today something even more crazy, a triple alphabet. So what the people, hell's that? Some people have gone to do more than one alphabet. So what? They just redo the A to Z? They do different park runs from A to Z. But this is a bit more tricky because there is some letters like Q, Y and Z. It's more difficult to get the, those letters. So what's the maximum A to Z you can do? Has anybody worked that out yet? I think it's three or four. Okay. Maybe four now because we've got a new Y recently. Right. Right. So what we're going to do now is go through the other options. So the top corner, you can see there's three little lines and we're going to go through all the different options. Yeah, this options. is my favourite bit. Though. So park runs. So first of all, pops up um, your favourite. So you yeah. can see Finsbury Park is your favourite. Why has it got that orange marker on it? Because what's coming up is they've got a cancellation. I think they've got a festival or something in there. They have quite a lot of events over the summer and the park doesn't allow them to have a park run or they might have... I think they've got a tough muddler coming up there, that's why. Now, what excites me is when you click visited and just look at all the park runs. Do you get excited when you see that? Yeah, I really do. So what was your favourite park run out of all of those? I really like the Seaford one, look. Right, sea Seaford. And why Why did you like it so much? I like anyone that's by the sea. I mean, it can be windy and it can be a bit treacherous, but just to be by the sea with that sea breeze blowing in your face on a Saturday morning at 9am just makes you feel joy. Now, I did one of them with you. Um, I'm just going to open Seaford just so people can see it. But I did a beach one with you. It's hard work, it isn't is it? It is hard work. I actually was really lucky. This was at Christmas Eve. And the lady that I went with, who's an, uh, uh, I met from the Park Run group, we're good friends now. She actually told me, dress up really warm, wear loads of layers. It's going to be absolutely freezing. And I've never been so hot in my life. It was the most <laughs> calm day ever. There was no wind whatsoever. And I was just stripping off layers as I kept running around this course. So it just it really does depend on the day. Now, what is the worst park run out of all these? I think one of the most difficult park runs, um, before I say the worst one, was the one that we did together at the um, um, the Great Yarmouth North Beach, Duck. That yes. was really tricky. Just because it was quite boggy sand, wasn't it? It's actually on sand dune. So that is a really tough course. Um, you can't often run it, but yeah, it is a good course. Um, my least favourite park run, which I do attempt to do again, because it is one of my local ones, is the Hackney Marshes. I do think park run does come with a lot of atmosphere, and that's really important. Um, and I feel there lacks the atmosphere of inclusivity, if that's how you pronounce it to be honest and I think that's a shame because it is a really nice course I know a lot of people say it's because the course changed after lockdown and the Olympic kind of park thing um but I just think the course in general is it could be a really lovely course but I think the way they set out their marshals and the way they make people feel about their times is not the best attitude that we would like to show in the park run and ironically it's your lo closest Lo's one part, to your yeah. house isn't it so I don't go there often Right, now there's another button. It says find a park run. Yeah, this is great. So if you are, like me, trying to find your nerdy, so we kind of looked at that before, that tells you when that's closest to your house. So it's, this shows us where we are now, because we're now at the airport, and you yeah. can see there's a park run yeah. just here. And it tells you the distance. Now that works really quite well, but it is actually sometimes, depending on transport and how you're getting to the park run, also good to use something like Google Maps because it tells you the actual distance, but sometimes you might not be able to go around that way, for example, because of roads or how it's built. So, or you might have to cross a river. So it is important to also look on Google Maps. And I do encourage people to use public transport to get to park runs because it is better for the environment. Okay. Now the other thing as well is this search thing. What does that do? This can just search the name, but go back and press the other one, which is like two lines. This is really good. So what you can do here is it shows you the ones you visited. That's all on it anyway. So. But if you put filter, if you put, say, a letter in the filter, I would say put Y, for example, and then click back. And then zoom out. It will show you all the ones that are with a Y in, in England. 
And it might show you, I don't know if there's wires anywhere else in the world. No, just two wires. Maybe America, uh, Australia, sorry. Yeah, see? Oh, yeah, there's loads of wires there. Yeah, and in New Zealand there's a wire, I think, as well. Oh, there's one in uh, Tokyo as well. Yeah. So if anyone wants to pay for me to fly to Japan, looking forward to that. <laughs> right, so, so that is kind of the... It's basically an advanced filter. You can find yeah, loads you can of different put numbers things. as well. So if you were say you needed to get um park run with one one one, it might show you the one that's coming up one one one. So there's none next week with one one one. Oh, oh there, there is. is in America, and yeah, Australia. Because one 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 is a special number that you do need. So, right. So that was the find park run. Yeah. And then you can also just search for them, can you, as well, by yeah. name and stuff. Okay. Sorry, boring you. On the third. I've been running since seven. Right. So next up, friends. So here we have your friends. And to add friends, you can just go into that screen yeah. and then click add. Now here, I'm going to search my name. Now, the good thing about this, you know, like Facebook and other social media, you have to wait for that friend to accept you on the part run because it's an open database the person doesn't need to actually accept you or anything do they which is the nice exciting thing it is i think i do th um i think there is some disadvantage of that because you can see a lot of information um i don't know why it's not bringing up let me just try that again um yeah so what information can people see you can see where you've run yeah you can find out the statistics so i can click on profile i can find you can find out my name yeah my awards my number also my location my you've time. Been through, yeah so basically everything that we've gone through you can see it yeah so there's actually nothing private is there no so but that's a good thing to bear in mind everything that you're putting on your app people can see but that's on your part run profile anyways yeah so it is all open information. So also when I clicked on my name, there's a compare, which I really like this. So you can compare your stats. I'm going to be the winner. With a friend there. But that's nice to see, isn't it? And you can see my volunteer ratio is shocking at 5%. Because we actually did our first part run together, look. Yeah. So that is nice, isn't it, to see that sort of information. What floating index have you got? Oh, two. So... Uh, I'll just have a look for anything. Else. Exclude friend from f exclude from feed and remove. We don't want to do any of those. Right. So that was the friends tab. Yeah. The next one is the clubs. Now I am actually a, a member of the East London Running Club, so I can see all the people that run recently um, in the park run. I get that on my thing, but this is quite interesting to see um, all these people who run today from my club. So if I click today, uh, oh, it just changes the yeah. information yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. So the settings, so manage club. Also, I'll just remember my remind my uh, slimmers that there is a slim brother club. So for my slimmers, if you haven't, then please add yourself into the no, leave it on the slim brother club. I, the thing is, I didn't realise before, you can actually be a member of two clubs, so just don't feel like you have to be only a member of one. Nice. If you right. are a member of a running club. So like that me. was clubs. Right, next up, leagues. What is this leagues thing? I don't understand it. What I can understand from the league is if you've got somebody you're competing against, so say you, me and Joe wanted to do a challenge, we could set up a, a league. And it looks like you just got to... Co. It's basically a running club, but it's like a short term thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think you can Which do like 12 or whatever. Okay. Right. Reviews. What are these? Right. So these are general reviews, I think, of the app. Oh, no, they're all, all different courses, recent, recent things. What is good to do, though, if you don't actually want to see all the reviews of general park runs, you can go on to the actual park run of that on the map that we saw before. And you can reviews, re review reviews of that particular park run. So if I go back to park run, for instance, and I go to Finsbury yeah. Park, yeah. as well as that information yeah, that they've go got down. there, if I go all the way down, here's the actual reviews yeah. from there. 
But that other tab then just gives you basically all the latest reviews yeah. for everything. I've actually had a few reviews. Um, barcode. So this is just a fast way to find your yep. barcode. Uh, planner. Now this looks exciting. Oh, this is my favourite. Yeah. So what is it? So you can plan all the events that you're going to go to. So it's quite good. It's like a calendar for Heart Run. It's quite good if a special event's coming out. So if, if you look here, if you go to the end of, um, I know that if you see it, 29th of April, that's a special event that I need to attend. So I will put that in my planner 666. <laughs> but that's uh, what will also happen. If there's a cancellation between, then it will change it. Okay. Right. So that's the planner. Yeah. Uh, next up is utilities, special events. What's that? That shows you events because actually each country has a chance to have one special event per year extra. So oh. in the UK, we have it on Christmas Day. Um, in some other countries, they do it on Boxing Day. Norwegian do it, or they're doing one on the 1st of May, so you could attend that if you'd like to. Uh, pace calculator. This is where you can check your pace. So, what shall I put in? What's your pace now? 31? Yeah. So if I calculate that... That'll be about 6.12. So what does that mean? That tells me I need to run at that pace per kilometre. Oh, okay. So that's the pace calculator. Stats... This is the global stats. Oh, this is the global. So what we went through earlier, that's the global, global stats. Style. Yeah. Right. Add a freedom run. What's a freedom run? Um, this came about during the COVID period, Duck. You could sign up and put in a, a freedom run. I'm not sure if you can actually still do that. And then add a knock port run. What's the difference between a knock port run and a freedom run? I think that might be at the moment because of the France situation. Okay. Because at the front are all cancelled, so I think you can add it. It's not a part run, but it is a part run. Why are all the fronts uh, um, cancelled? So if you are aware of the local um, health news in France, they require that you have to have a medical certificate to say you're fit to run for all kind of events that are sort of like a race, for example. They had a loophole before. They thought they were legally covered to continue park running there without the medical certificate. But they've realised that maybe legally, if something was to happen to a park runner, they wouldn't be covered by insurance. Therefore, they've had to ban all park runs in France at the present time um, until they can resolve the situation with the French government. Right. I'm just in the news um, section. That's just updates on the app basically isn't it news yeah. about the app uh settings so this is where you can just change things to meters to kilometers if you want to uh how you log out your profile I don't love that. account uh edit park run account so again it just takes you online delete your park run account status um and then just some technical information uh about now i found this really in good information when I saw it. So Michael Clayton is actually the guy that made this uh, uh, this app. And he, you know, he, he does it for very little cost and he does have support. So you can donate if you want. I think it's one or two pounds a month um, over 12 months to help keeping the app, the app up to date, relevant. And he does make a lot of changes. I have heard, I don't know if this is true because I haven't actually yet to donate. But if you do donate some money to him, he might put on one of your challenge requests. And also, look, he's listed his supporters yeah, as well. That's people nice. Who helped him with the challenges. And but look who one of them is. That oh, nice, Agatha. No, the top. This one. The Paul oh, Paul, one. Paul, who started Park Run. I think Andy Hamilton is someone up there with Park Run as well. And remember, guys, if you can't afford to uh, support the app, just leaving a review for the app is yeah. also and promoting it to friends and family. Leaving a review and promoting it is actually better than supporting it. To yeah. be honest. Um, and then finally, there was just help. Um, and again, it's nice that you can actually get in touch with a guy. We, right. We so that's the challenges. So where's the challenges? So we go to full, um, full park runner. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is something we missed out then. So at the bottom in the full profile, right at the start. So this was the first section. The next section is your all your part runs yeah, there. Yeah. 
Okay, the middle one is events. Events. The I is the roles are done for volunteering. What you see, I didn't even know this. This is why we're making this video, guys, because every time I open this app, I learn something new. There is so much information in this app. And then this is what this video is all about. The challenges. Yes. So you're 57 complete. Yeah. Why does it say 35 or 35? Doesn't that mean you've completed them all? There's 35 mean... um, challenges. Oh, so you've, you're doing them all, basically. Yeah. So this is all. What is your favourite challenge? Um, I do like I like the volunteer of all trades, which I've completed. Um, I also like the A to Z challenge. We can have a little look at that now because we're here. Click on it, Doug, and it tells you what's left. So if you can see... And it also tells you you've had extra ones as well. So I'm just submitting the three letters. So that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. To see it like that. Yeah, it's really exciting. So you see now, looking at that, I start to understand why people are so obsessed about this A to Z. And then this is the the fem. I can't say that word. Um, this is where you have to have different numbers. This is why it's really important to get number one. Okay. So that's a challenge. So if you get all those numbers, you can complete it. And then there's also So tell us a little bit more about any other. So they've got the um, Nelson's challenge. Okay. So Nelson's challenge. And what's this? This is where you need to have multiples of three numbers the same. So the I didn't really understand this challenge until I, um a bit later on, but this 777 at Wimbledon Common was one of the most crazy experiences um it is basically there isn't going to be another one until at least 18 months so this is why so many people went and it was in london and there was over uh, i think there was a 1400 or 500 people at least um that was there maybe more um because they needed this 777 number so it was a really popular event um i think there won't be another 777 for so long um and then the next highest one 888 which is bushy i missed last year there will be a bushy 888 um, in Wimbledon will be the next one. So it's another 18 months to wait for the next number, really, Doug. So, and the good thing is, you know, when people are getting close to doing all these challenges, it's just going to add another challenge. It's literally non-stop, isn't it? Yeah, it's non-stop. And I think it's good as well because you get to meet some familiar faces. A lot of tourists are kind of, um, you know, friendly and they meet up. And I think the cow scarf is really good. So basically, I didn't. there's a cow challenge. Um, and people wear this scarf. So when they are touring and you're on a bus or a train and people see you traveling, they sometimes chat to you and catch up and you might go for a coffee with someone after if you're a bit of a lone traveler like me sometimes. So, you know, it's all a big part run community. And I feel like my friendships are growing as we get to meet more people. That was the 5K app. I do hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you want to ask any questions about this, she really is the expert, guys. So feel free to leave us some comments. Now, before she goes, we're going to ask her, what are your top three tips for the 5K app? What are your best bits? I think planning is the one thing. The planner is so good to find out where you're going to go to next. Always remember, it doesn't always go to plan. So just, you know, on a Friday night, keep checking your journey planner or whatever you're using for travel. Um, that's really good churn planner um, just you know looking for the apps and finding the challenges once you've completed each challenge for top tip two is once you've looked at the way you're going to get what you can get you can find all the challenges and it gives you a sense of achievement at the end of the run even if you're not getting a say personal best or you know you're running at the same speed but you still want to achieve something well the achievements make you feel a bit high at the end of your park run um, and you know just traveling and enjoying places that you can visit the so top three Finding and travelling to new places by using the app, which helps you to find the nearest ones to you and what's around your area, especially if you're on holidays and things. So I think, you know, a lot of people go on holiday and forget the exercise, but you can still incorporate exercise because it's once on a Saturday morning. Now, we like to ask all our podcast guests a topical question. We are on the rundown now for Easter. What is your favourite Easter egg or do you love a different Easter treat? I like to just have a bit of bag of crisps, to be honest. <laughs> Has there ever been an Easter crisp egg? I wish there was. I think there should be crisp shaped egg, you know, like a potato. I just eat a potato for Easter because, you know, I'm trying not to eat chocolate. I haven't really eaten chocolate for so long. I know that they do a cheese egg. Well, that oh, tickle your yeah, fancy. that would tickle my fancy, look. 
Right. I might see if I can get it for Mazda. Right, Claire, thank you for joining in. That is it. As I said, feel free to message, leave a comment, guys. Claire is here to help you with the 5K app. Go, Always record us on your watch. Go to your app store now and download it. It's just called 5K. Free. And add Claire as a friend, guys. As you can see, you can add people. It's C-L-A-R-E, Stevens as in s-t-e-v-e-n-s -E -E i'll put it on the screen guys so you can see search your name add her and compare yourself can you beat her on the volunteers i don't know about that will anybody beat her on the volunteers some people might do because they know 250 volunteers now <laughs> right thank you for joining us we'll see you again soon bye <laughs>